Welcome to Vicki's Country Home. If you haven't been here before, welcome. My name is Vicki, and if you like what you see, please be sure and subscribe and hit that little notification bell below and show all videos so you'll know every time I upload a video. Today I'm planning on canning whole kernel corn and I wanted to do this so badly last year, but with the drought, there just it there was nothing available. And when it was, it was so expensive, it didn't make sense. Usually 75 cents to a dollar an ear of corn. That that is crazy. So I found this yesterday for 19 cents for each ear, but you could only buy 12. So I bought some first to try because according to the NCHFP, if you find really sweet corn, sometimes when you can it, it can discolor because of the high sugar content. So it makes sense also to try a smaller amount and see how it goes first. If it turns out well, then we'll go back and buy at least one box for me to can. So today I've just got 12 ears. I'm going to shuck these and then I'm gonna remove the kernels off of the cob. Then we're gonna can it. So let's get started. I have the 12 ears of corn shucked and you'll notice right here, I've got a pile of corn soap. Now this isn't from all of them, it's maybe half. But why am I saving corn silk? Well, it has long been used in Native American and Chinese herbal medicine. It has a number of things that it may help with. I'm not a doctor, so please be sure and do some research, but it won't hurt you. My mother used this for years when she had UTIs, urinary tract infections. But doing some research, there's quite a few other things that it may help with. And again, you have to do your own research because we're not doctors. But potential benefits, it provides antioxidants, has anti-inflammatory properties, may manage blood sugar, may lower blood pressure, may reduce cholesterol. The way my mother used it was to make a tea, but for what they're saying, you can also make your own capsules and create your supplements. They're saying most labels for corn silk supplements recommend considerably lower doses of 400 to 450 milligrams taken two to three times a day. Although most available research says that it's non-toxic and that daily doses as high as 4.5 grams per pound of body weight are likely safe for most people. Again, do some research if you're interested in this. There's plenty out there about it. But you're just going to throw this away. Or like I'm doing with the rest of the husks, they are going in the compost. And all I'm going to do, because we are very dry here, I'm just spreading them out on dehydrator sheets. I'm not even hauling out my dehydrator for this because these will be dry in no time. I'm just gonna spread them out so they're exposed to air and let them dry. That's it. And they're not being wasted. The NCHFP calls for blanching the corn before you cut it off the cob. Now you don't have to do this is my understanding, but what I have read is it's easier to cut the corn off the cob if you do that. So you blanch it for three minutes. 
and then you put it in an ice bath to cool off. I'm gonna do this in two batches. We'll come back when that's done. I've blanched these for three minutes. I put them in an ice bath. Now it's time to cut the corn off of the cob. And you want to go about three quarters of an inch deep. You don't want to scrape the cob. I got myself this little tool and I just tried it and it works really well. You can use a knife and that will work also. But I like this because this really does a good job. But there's also kind of a feel to it, so you don't want to scrape. You don't want to put too much pressure on it. And that can be given to the chickens. I've seen a lot of people make corn cob jelly. I never have, so I don't know how it is. But I heard it's really good. I got all 12 of those ears done. And this is how much it made. I did put this up here because sometimes corn was going everywhere. This stopped a lot of it, so that was good. This is very easy to use. It still takes a little getting used to, but once you get the hang of it, it goes pretty fast. I'm gonna say all of this in, I don't know, five to 10 minutes. These are going to the chickens who are gonna love it because there's all this corn still left because you don't cut and scrape the cob. So we're gonna take all those out to the chickens today. They're gonna have a feast. I have my canner, my pressure canner heating, and I have my jars heating also because we're gonna use hot jars even though it's raw pack. And I've got the water heating in the canner. So once that's all ready, and I also have a pot with water boiling, coming up to a boil, because that's what we're gonna use over the corn in the jars. So once this is all coming together, I'll bring you back. Let's get canning. My canner and jars are hot. My water's almost at a boil. And I do heat my lids. They say not to. Well, I don't think, I don't know if Superb says one way or the other. I like those lids and I do heat them. So I've got everything ready to go ahead and start jarring up this corn. And I'm gonna have to do it in two places because over there, I have projects for videos in progress. I have pickled baby peaches, and I've got my wheat grinder and the sourdough starter that I am creating. So I have all kinds of stuff going on over there. So some of it will be here, some of it over there. But first, we need to get out one jar at a time and add the corn. And I do this, this keeps my jars nice and warm, so it works well. All right, I have pint jars I'm putting this in, and a funnel, and I'm going to just scoop it in there. You do not want to pack this, so you bring it down you bring it to about one inch headspace, which is where this ring is right here. And I need just a tiny bit more. But you don't wanna pack it down. You don't wanna 
do anything. You want it in there loosely. So I'm going to bring this over now and get this ready to go in the canner. For each pint jar, I am going to add a half of a teaspoon of canning salt. Canning salt because it won't get cloudy because it doesn't have any additives. Then I'm going to add, I need my funnel again. Then I'm going to add my hot water to the jar and I want this to reach one inch headspace, which again is right here. But we want to make sure that there's no air bubbles. So you debubble it and that's pretty close to one inch still. It didn't really change it. So I'm not gonna add any more water. Wipe the rim, always. Get your lid on and put the ring on finger tight, not tight, just finger tight. This is gonna go in the canner and I'm gonna repeat this till I run out of the corn. I got my jars filled. I have seven full pints and I had about half pint left, but I had this jar already prepared. So this is three quarters of a pint. So I'm gonna, I just put that in there and put a little bit of water I'm not going to store this on the shelf. This will be for me to taste and test because I tasted this corn and it's pretty sweet. The NCHFP advises that if there's a high sugar content, this could go dark and it could get an off taste because of the high sugar. Probably more of a burnt taste. So. I figured this is a great way for me to test this and know if it's going to be good on my shelf. So I have my pressure canner all set up. I'm going to turn this up to come up to temperature. I've already put oil around my rim. because we do not have a gasket on the All-American. And this is my little one and I love it because when I have a small batch, it just is so much better. It doesn't take as long because there's less space to come up to pressure. So you get it fairly even. You close opposites lightly because we want to make sure that this is even pressure all the way around. So now we tighten from opposite sides. And I tighten it pretty tight. We're gonna bring this up to the point where it's venting right here. And we want this to vent strongly for 10 minutes. That gets all of the air out of the pressure canner. Once it does that, we'll put the weighted gauge on and we will wait until it comes up. This is just for information. Until it comes up to pressure and then it will start rocking. That's the point where we start the timer. And we're going to time this for 55 minutes. And at my altitude, weighted gauge is gonna be 15 pounds of pressure. If I were doing this 
based on a gauge, it would be 13 pounds of pressure because I'm at 5,200 feet. But check your own altitude because it's very important. So I'm just gonna let this do its thing. I'll bring you back and we'll see how this corn comes out. I let this canner process for 55 minutes. It's completely gone down to zero. Take off the weight and you notice just a slight little sound. That's all that I heard. And I'm going to loosen the lid. Always, always, always tilt it away from you. Now this is set long enough that I don't think I'm going to have to worry about siphoning. So I'm just going to go ahead and take the lid off. And I'm going to let this sit for just a couple minutes to kind of equalize the temperature. So now let's take these jars out and see how they look. The color looks good. We'll wait and see. There they are. It looks like they all sealed, but we'll have to wait and see. I'm going to let these sit for at least 12 hours up to 24 hours and give them a check. So I'm just going to let them sit. We'll come back tomorrow. It's been, it's been over 12 hours since I finished canning these and pulled them out of the canner. Let them sit undisturbed overnight on a cloth. You need to protect it from your countertops and protect your countertops from the heat. But you don't want to put a really hot jar on top of a cool countertop. Not a good idea. But I did not use vinegar in my canner yesterday and we have fairly hard water it's from a well so I want to show you you get this cloudy look on the jars you can put the vinegar in the canner and it will prevent that but I didn't this time I thought about it and it's like nah I'm not gonna do it so all you do is you just take vinegar And wipe it down well with the vinegar. And that will remove the cloudy. Now all of my jars sealed. They're all a good seal. This was a ball lid. The rest were superb. Again, I've, I have never had an issue at all with the superb. So this is the jar that I partially filled. And... If you look at these, they didn't discolor a whole lot. They did slightly, but not bad. I was concerned because this is a sweeter corn, and I had read about sweet corn could give you discoloration, but it really didn't. So I'm going to be opening this jar and taking a taste to see it, how it tastes, if there was any off taste due to the sugar. But I'm thinking these are good. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish getting the film off of all the jars and we'll come back to have a taste. So I got my jars all wiped off 
They look better than they did. Some of them still have a slight film, but it's fine. But the corn looks good. So now we're gonna taste it and see if it's good. I'm not gonna bother heating this because it was just canned and you could use this just like this. But that's what the corn looks like. It smells good. Now let's have a taste and see how it is. Mmm. You would think after 55 minutes under pressure, processing time, that this would be mushy. It's not, it's crispy. It tastes good, there's no off flavors. So I'm gonna go back and get some more of this and get it in jars. This one I'll put in the refrigerator, we'll eat today. And I'm very happy with my whole kernel, mostly canned corn. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this, please go down below, subscribe, and hit the notification bell that says all notifications so that I can bring more to you as life goes on. Thank you for watching and God bless.